guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're going to be putting the Believe Beauty products to the test. Now, if you've never heard of this brand, I actually did an unboxing of the PR package I got from them last week. They're exclusive to Dollar General stores, and also they're on their website, and everything in this brand is $5 or less, which is pretty amazing. And when I was unboxing everything and swatching it, I was really impressed with the quality, but of course, swatches don't always tell the full story, so I definitely wanted to apply everything for you guys so you can see how how it goes on and also how it wears throughout the day so now that I've been testing everything out I have some thoughts and opinions and just basically information on how the products wear throughout the day and things like that so why don't we go ahead and just jump right in and get started so the first product I'm going to apply is the pretty and primed color correcting primer this retails for five dollars and this is a green tinted primer that's supposed to kind of reduce redness and even out your skin tone so I'm not actually going to apply this all over my face I'm just putting it on the areas where I have redness such as my nose and on my chin and I have to say compared to other green tinted primers that I've used in the past this one is a little bit more on the lighter side as far as the color goes, so it doesn't color correct as much as other ones that I've tried. That being said, it also doesn't create sort of a green cast to my skin, so I do like that about it, but I just didn't find that it reduced any of my redness at all, and so um, I really didn't see much results from this as far as color correcting goes. It is silicone free though, so it has a really lightweight kind of lotion texture. It doesn't have that slippery silicone feel that a lot of primers do. And then um, the Pretty and Primed Stay Put Makeup Primer is the one that I applied to the rest of my face, like my forehead, my cheek area. And I wanted to see if this had any kind of blurring effect, like blurring out my pores or fine lines. It claims to smooth the look of the skin and extend the wear of makeup. Again, this one is also silicone free, so it has more of a lotion texture. And I really didn't notice a lot of blurring benefits. It really just made my skin feel a little bit softer and smoother, but it didn't really look any different. I'm not necessarily sure if this helps makeup to last longer. I haven't really noticed a huge difference when I wear this versus when I don't. So as far as the primers go, I really just didn't see a whole lot of benefits from them. And then next up is the Skin Finish Foundation. This is $5 and the packaging on this is incredible. It was the first thing I noticed. I love the gold pump and the gold lettering on the bottle. It just feels so heavy and luxurious and really high-end feeling for a $5 foundation. Um, so I'm wearing the shade Ivory today and this one is a little bit yellow for my skin tone, but not too bad. I found that once I blended it in, it wasn't really a big deal that it didn't match. I am a little bit more pink undertone. The claims on this are that it's supposed to have medium to full coverage that blends effortlessly for a flawless look. It's also supposed to blur imperfections while smoothing your skin. A lot of times when a foundation claims to blur imperfections, it has some sort of shimmer to it that's supposed to reflect light away from your skin. And thankfully, this does not have that. I really, as I get older, don't do well with shimmery foundations. This one has a beautiful satin finish that's very, very skin-like. It's not overly drying. It also doesn't feel super hydrating on the skin either. It's just kind of a nice happy medium. Um, so I think going into summer This is gonna work really well for me in the winter when my skin is at its driest This might be just the tiniest bit too dry and I'm not saying that it's a dry formula It's just that it's not overly hydrating and that's normally what I reach for when it comes to the winter time with my skin um, It does blend into the skin beautifully. It looks really seamless um, It does really look like skin doesn't look like I'm wearing foundation. That being said, I would not call this a medium to full coverage foundation. It's more, to me, sheer to medium and can be built up to more of um, a heavy medium, I would say. I can still see my freckles and sunspots right through it when I go to apply the first layer. And I did end up having to go back in and apply a little bit more to my cheek area where I have more discoloration. But building up the product worked great. I didn't feel that it was getting cakey. It didn't look too heavy on my skin. It looked really still very seamless and just added a little bit more coverage. So I was very impressed with this formula. I would say if you're looking for more of a full coverage foundation though, this definitely isn't it. You have to be okay with going more to the sheer to medium route and building it up a little bit if you need to, but I still don't see it getting completely full coverage even with building it up. Next up we have the Your Covered Liquid Concealer. This is $4 and again, packaging on this is really, really nice. I'm super impressed with all the packaging in this line. Um, this one has a flat doe foot applicator and it claims to perfect your skin in one step. It says that it's a highly pigmented concealer that visibly brightens under eye darkness and tired lines with natural coverage. 
Again, I would say in this case the claims are true. This is a very, very creamy concealer. It's very hydrating on the skin. I would say more so than the foundation. It feels a lot creamier than the foundation. It's also a little bit thicker. The foundation was very thin. This has a little more weight to it, so it does, I think, have really nice coverage. I still wouldn't say it's completely full coverage, but it's better coverage than the foundation. It's a solid medium right out of the gate, and it blended into my skin really seamlessly. It didn't look obvious. It didn't settle into my lines at all. It just felt really moisturizing and made my under eye area look beautiful. Um, if you have more oily skin, I don't know if you'll have to set this, but with my dry skin, I don't have issues with concealer creasing, and this one definitely did didn't do that on me. I was very, very happy with this concealer. It covered up everything that I needed it to. It made my under eye area look brighter. I think this is definitely going to become one of my new favorite concealers. Next up for brows, I'm using the Brow Defining Pencil in the shade Blonde. This comes in a few different colors. It's $4 and it has a spoolie on one end and a brow pencil on the other. It's a super creamy pencil that reminds me a lot of the automatic twist up ones, even though it's not. And it really reminds me of the Flower Beauty eyebrow pencil. If you've tried that one, um, you know that it's super creamy and soft and you barely have to press down on it to get it to show up. So it's kind of unlike a lot of brow products in that way. A lot of the brow pencils that I have like the Brow Wiz from Anastasia and the other skinny pencils that I normally use are a little bit stiffer and harder to apply. You have to apply much more pressure to get them to show up. It's like a very creamy eyeliner pencil um, and that's good and it's bad. On the one hand I don't have to press too hard but on the downside I do prefer a more skinny pencil so that I can make those hair like strokes. I just think that skinnier pencils look more natural especially if you have wide areas where you need to fill in your brows. My brows in particular are very sparse near the inner corners and I have to do a lot of drawing in in that area. With a skinny pencil I can just make those really small hair like strokes and it looks like natural hair. When when you're applying something like this in an area with no hair it just looks overall like you drew in a brown crayon and just kind of filled in the area with a color it doesn't necessarily mimic those hair like strokes so that's one of the negatives of a product like this and I think this is better suited towards someone who just wants to fill in a couple of sparse areas but doesn't really have to draw in a lot and then next I'm using the brow styling gel this is four dollars and this is in the clear shade but it does come in a couple of different colors light brown and dark brown I believe and this is a really nice brow gel I think it has great hold I like the teeny tiny brush it reminds me a little bit of benefits gimme brow in that way um, I'm kind of wanting to test out the colors to see if it's a dupe for a gimme brow um, but I've only used the clear one so far and I think it has great hold it doesn't make my eyebrows feel stiff they feel soft throughout the day so I really do enjoy this one and then moving on to blush, I'm using the Born to Blush in the shade Wink. It's $4.75, and I'm applying it with the powder brush, which is $4. The powder brush is a really nice, soft, velvety feeling brush. It's really dense. It reminds me a lot of the Milani powder brush that I've been using lately, and this one's a lot cheaper, so I really do like it a lot. And this blush is fantastic. First of all, I love the color. It looks really bright in the pan, but it goes on super sheer, and you can build it up to your desired color, and that's exactly what I'm always looking for in a blush. I like my blush to look more natural and I find that this blends out just beautifully on the cheeks without looking powdery or cakey so I really really love this blush a lot. Can't wait to try the other colors. And then for highlighter I'm using the Perfect Glow Highlighting Stick in the shade Champagne Kiss. This is 450 and when it comes to a cream stick like this I don't like to draw it on my face just because I'm afraid it might lift up some of the foundation so I usually just run it back and forth across my fingers and then just dab it very gently on my cheeks that way. And what I love about this stick is that it's not glittery. It just has the most beautiful pearlized sheen. Again, it's a very natural highlight, which I'm totally into. And I think it just makes my skin look glowy without looking obviously like I'm wearing highlighter. And this is another product that reminds me of one from Flower Beauty. They used to have highlighting sticks like this. I don't think they have them anymore, but I really love those. I actually still own them in my collection. But they're getting old at this point, so I'm glad to have a new option. I can definitely see using this very often. And then for eyes, I'm using their eyeshadow palette in the shade Into the Blue, along with two of their brushes, the eyeshadow brush and then the crease brush. So first I went into this really beautiful medium blue satiny shade and applied that to the crease with the crease brush. And I have to say, I did enjoy using my Zoeva crease brush a little bit more the first time I did this look. I thought that it blended out a lot better using the Zoeva brush. So I know that these eyeshadows are incredibly blendable, but I had a little bit of a struggle using their eyeshadow brush. I'm 
not sure why because it feels really soft but I think it's a little bit denser than the Zoeva one so that one just blends it out a little bit easier so I just had to take some more time to blend using this particular brush and then next I'm taking a really deep blue green shade and applying that to the outer third of my eye and blending that back in and this one is so super pigmented I'm actually using my Zoeva flat brush for this one and I was so impressed with this shade that it doesn't become patchy even though it's a really deep dark shade especially a blue but it just performs beautifully and blends out so nicely and then for the inner part of my eye, I'm using a really light sort of silvery gray shade. And holy cow, this packs such a punch. I'm using my Zoeva pencil brush to get right into the corner and then blending it back towards the outer edge. And as you can see, over no primer and not wetting the shadow at all, it goes on so pigmented and just really packs it on there. There's no fallout with this either, which I was really impressed with. None of the shades had any fallout. So I really enjoy working with these because they're just so easy easy to blend and so easy to apply and pick up really really well with a brush so I had no issues with any of these shadows at all I think they are amazing especially for the price I also dipped into that grayish blue shade again that I used in my crease and applied that underneath my eyes and then I'm finishing off my eyes with the extended lash lengthening mascara this is four dollars and fifty cents it has one of those plasticky hard bristle brushes and the brush is kind of unique on this one in that it's flat rather than completely round so there's one side that's very wide and then another side that's very skinny so I like using the skinny side to get really close up to my lash line and kind of wiggle it up to the top and then and I flip it over and use the wider side to add a lot of volume and this mascara really does a good job at both volumizing and lengthening my lashes it's sort of a wet formula but not super wet it's definitely not a drier formula I think it's kind of maybe somewhere in the middle it's not clumpy at all but yet it still adds a lot of volume so I really do love this mascara a lot it also doesn't smudge or flake underneath my eyes even wearing it all day so I was very very impressed by that as well and then last but not least is the Velvet Matte Liquid Lip. I'm wearing the shade Foxy, which is a really pretty nude pink. It's sort of like a Your Lips But Better color. These are $4 each. They do not have any scent to them, so if you're sensitive to scents, you'll really like that about this. It also has a really velvety, sort of cushiony feel going on. A little bit more of a drier formula, but also very lightweight. And when I say it's a dry formula, I don't mean that it dries your lips out. I just mean that it's not super runny or liquidy like some liquid lipsticks can be. It's a little bit more of a moussey kind of texture, I guess you could say and it feels really really nice going on the lips and also does not dry out my lips throughout the day which is pretty incredible so this is one of the few matte liquid lipsticks I can actually wear and then here's the finished look so I'm gonna go about my day and do a check-in probably somewhere around the eight hour mark so I will see you guys then Hey guys, it's about 6 p.m. So it's been roughly eight hours since I applied everything and I did wipe the eyeshadow off because I had a meeting after school with my son's teacher and I just didn't want to wear like this kind of bolder blue eyeshadow look. So I wiped it off, but um, I did wear the same exact look the other day for a full nine hours and I took a photo of what it looked like at the nine hour mark. Um, so I'll show that here. I had posted it on my Instagram stories as well um, that particular day. And even though it definitely faded somewhat, it faded very evenly and it also didn't crease on me. I don't normally have much of an issue with eyeshadows creasing because I have drier eyelids, um, but I also didn't wear a primer. So if you have more oily eyelids and you're worried about creasing, try it with a primer, but I'm, it really stayed nicely on me. And I would say it only started to fade around probably the six hour mark, maybe six to seven. So I thought that it wore a pretty long time. Um, the foundation is still looking good. I don't really notice it wearing away at all. My nose still doesn't have the redness peeking through so that's awesome the blush is still there um, the highlighter I can still see a little bit even the lipstick I have to say I'm impressed with this lipstick because I'm normally not a fan of matte liquid lipsticks at all but this one felt comfortable the entire day my lips still feel comfortable they don't feel dried out at all the one thing I will say about it is it does transfer slightly I would say it's transfer resistant it didn't smudge all over the place even when I was drinking um, I didn't notice it really coming off that much on a cup maybe just a tiny tiny little bit so while it's not completely transfer proof it's not transferring or smudging everywhere so I think it's really long wearing and it stained my lips I mean I can still see this color on here so I would say thumbs up for this matte liquid lipstick for sure this is is one of the only ones I've ever tried that lasted this long and also felt this comfortable and then what else oh my brows um 
the brow gel doesn't feel crunchy. My brows feel very soft, but the pencil held up well. I still think they look the same as they did before. Oh, the mascara, that's the other thing. I've worn this mascara now a bunch of times and it doesn't smudge, it doesn't flake, it lasts all day. It still looks perfect just the way that I applied it. So I'm just super happy with most of the things I tried. The only thing I would really say I was kind of disappointed in was the primers because um, the green one really didn't seem to color correct all that much. And I kind of wish that they had blurred my skin a little bit more or maybe filled in some fine lines. They may be keeping my foundation on a little bit longer, but it's kind of hard to tell. And like I said, I just wish there was something a little bit more tangible, like that they smoothed out my complexion. Um, but I really didn't notice too much. It was almost like just applying a second moisturizer. That's sort of what it felt like to me. But other than that, I think everything else I tried was fantastic. I am so excited to try more from this brand for sure, because there's still a ton of products I haven't even tried yet. So anyway, guys, that's my update and I will catch you later. All right, guys. So that is everything. I would love to hear from you down in the comments below. If you've found products from this brand at your dollar general yet, have you tried them out? I would love to hear your thoughts. I know a lot of you guys were saying that you were having trouble finding it, that your local store didn't have it out yet. And I would say that if you're in store and you don't see it there, ask somebody who works there when they're going to be put out because a few of you guys had actually um, DM'd me on Instagram and said that when you went to the store, it wasn't there. But when you asked somebody, they actually went into the back and pulled out some boxes and allowed them to look through and shop the products. So it couldn't hurt. I don't think everybody who works there is going to be willing to go to that length. They'll probably just say, yes, we have it, but you know, we can't put it out yet. We can't take it out or whatever the case is. But at least if you're showing interest, maybe it'll like light a fire on them to get it going and put the products out if they know that people are interested. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Also, if you're not subscribed already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.